People say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, the Silver Crest Slim Espresso Machine. Lidl is a very big grocery store in Europe and now they're also opening some stores in America. And they've come out with this machine which really reflects the Dewangi Dedica. And we wanna take a look and see, does it make sense to buy this machine and save maybe 25 or 50 euros or the Dedica? Is it worth it to do that or not? So this can normally be had for about 100 euros and on sale you can get it for about 80. The Dedica on the other hand can be had anywhere from between 125 up to 175 euros. So it is a little bit more. But what we want to talk about is how is the quality of this one compared to this one? How good is the espresso and the milk steaming that come out of this one compared to the Dedica? And in the end, is it worth it to buy this? We're also going to talk about aftermarket parts because that is also a way that you can really get a lot more out of these machines. So we're gonna see how compatible are these two as well. All right, so as you can see, these machines are both very similar. They're both made out of stainless steel. They're both rounded in the front. They have three buttons on the slim. They're mounted vertically, so that is one design difference. They are both really similar in looks. They both have a small water tank that opens on a hinge. It's just really the same design. And they both also come with a lever for the steam valve. Here it is the steam wand on the side. They're both normally Panarello type. I've already, re already replaced this one on the Dedica. And this one, all I have to do is pull the Panarello off. And there I've got actually a pretty good steamer. They both come with pressurized baskets in the port filter. One difference you will notice is that there's two holes here in the Delonghi Dedica's water tank and that is for the overpressure valve to be able to put water back up in here in case there's too much pressure in the system. On the Silvercrest model there is only one hole to feed the machine with water so I'm not really sure what this one does with this excess overpressured water. Let's put the Dedica away for now and just concentrate on this espresso machine from Silvercrest. All right guys, now if you're getting any value at all from this video, please give the video a like, push it up to more people. And if you like this kind of videos, consider subscribing to the channel. So let's keep going here. What have we all got with the Silver Crest? It's got an on button here on the side, just the same as the Dedica. And what's kind of funny about this machine is that it beeps. It beeps at you when it's starting. It beeps at you uh, when it's heated up. So it's got a lot of beeping and I have not found a way to turn that off. So keep that in mind. It comes with pressurized baskets. Okay, it's ready. It comes with these pressurized baskets, just like what you have in the DeLonghi Dedica. But of course I want to replace these with a better IMS basket, which is what I've got installed right now. How it normally works is that you've got this pressurized basket inside and it is going to, um, you need to put in coffee grounds that are a bit coarser in there. And it basically just kind of forms a soup inside here and the pressure comes out through a single hole. That single hole uh, stream of liquid is going to go down into this diverter here. There's like a mesh screen on the diverter. So the stream of liquid comes down, goes through that mesh screen and gets distributed here throughout the bottom of the portafilter. And this is plastic, by the way. The portafilter itself is aluminum. So those are the materials that you're dealing with. What I did do is I cut the bottom off of the original portafilter with a hacksaw and I put an IMS basket in here. So this way we're really able to see what we can get out of this machine. Now there is something quite unfortunate about the machine uh, and one big difference to the Dedica and that is the shower screen. The Dedica has got a shower screen with holes all over uh, the shower screen. This one does not. The holes in this shower screen really just fill part of the surface area and not the entire surface area and therefore you really get cratered shots, which sucks. There's only one thing you can really do to alleviate those cratered shots and that is to use a puck screen like this one here from Normcore. I've been using this. Uh, this is a 51 millimeter and it does fit in this machine and you can see that puck looks good. So you can help out with puck screens when you've got a really crappy shower screen. Yeah, this is basically just a copy of the Dedica. 
You will see these also, I think, on the Chinese market. And I think there's a model called the EOS in Brazil. It's exactly the same as this one. So it seems to be being made by different Chinese manufacturers and just sold under different labels around the world. It uses a 51 millimeter basket, therefore a 51 millimeter porta filter. The unfortunate thing is that it's smaller than the DeLonghi Dedicut, Cut, just a little bit. These tabs here are two millimeters smaller in diameter than the Dedica, therefore you cannot just use a Dedica portafilter and put it in here. That is really too bad. So anyway, I've got this bottomless portafilter here. I put an IMS basket in and let's just see what kind of espresso we can get out of it and on what kind of milk stick. Now, just to foreshadow a little bit, I'll tell you one thing. Just pulling off the Panarello, I got excellent milk foam right away from this. It's very powerful. So that is a plus point for this machine. Very nice milk steaming. Why are you beeping now? Let's just go ahead and pull ourselves a shot. So I'm using this bean. This is Samoka, a very nice bean in Germany. You can find it Rossmann. Pretty fresh. I think it's just three weeks old. We're going to do 16 grams. We'll go ahead and do just a little WD teen as well. Give this a fair chance. And with this particular shot, I'm not going to use the puck screen. I'm just going to let it run through as it normally would so that we can see what difference it makes. Um, and you're going to see this forms a humongous crater. Okay. That's what the shot looks like right there. Let's be fair and let this preheat a little. All right, I guess it's ready again. So we can lock in our load here, 16 grams. And let's just have a look and see how the extraction looks. It's actually uh, looking pretty good, pretty nice and creamy. Nice color to it. I am using nice fresh beans, and so that makes a difference. And we got 20 grams. We're going to aim for 30 or 32 grams. There we go. 29 grams there in about 30 seconds. It does have volumetric dosing, so it will stop at the programmed amount, which is what just happened. And just like the Dedica, it will keep dripping afterwards because it's got no three-way solenoid valve there in the brew group. But that's our shot right there. Pretty nice, pretty creamy. The taste, I mean, it's got a certain, a certain bitterness and a certain sourness to it here in the back of my jaw. Um, mm. So it's not able to get a really well-rounded shot, but I mean, the price is so cheap. So considering the price, yes, it can make espresso. Just, it's not great espresso. But what it does do really well is steam. So let's, let's go on steam mode one time. Now I, I myself uh, find that beeping super annoying. I don't know about you guys. What do you think about the beeping? Do you like that oral feedback or not? So you can see you get a very, very uh, strong, strong steam here. You can see it's really that milk is churning like a son of a gun. Um, and therefore, you can get a really nice textured milk. It's already getting pretty hot. Let's turn that off. Yeah, so that, that is a pretty nice creamy, creamy milk there. Nevertheless, I'm going to pour it here into my other pitcher to incorporate the milk even better. 
clean that off. And then let's make ourselves a cappuccino. My dog has decided she wants to be in the video today. Yeah. Okay, so there's the cappuccino right there. That is a pretty nice looking cappuccino. Extremely creamy milk. So what I want to say is that you don't have to spend a ton of money to get a, a really nice cream. And how does that taste? Oh, beautiful milk. That, that is delightful. Milk, perfect. Espresso, not great. And one other thing to mention is that this steam wand here, it only, it's only got a slight range of motion. It can only go zip, 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 zip. It also doesn't swivel. It can't go up and down. It just goes zip, zip, zip. So keep that in mind. I would say let's go ahead and take a look at the puck and see what the crater looks like. It didn't crater all that bad, but you do you do see it's actually like compressed uh, pretty crazily in there. Normally I will see a crater right in the middle. Anyway, that's what that one looks like compared to that one with the Normcore filter. Here, this is what the Normcore puck screen, and that is the, the one that has cratered without the puck screen. There's quite a difference in how they turn out, these coffee pucks. So yeah. And let's just use a pressurized basket and see what it looks like coming out of there uh, with a pressurized extraction and going through this mesh screen. Let's see what is really happening. By the way, I did also have to put a spring in here. This did not come with a spring. So that's one more thing to keep in mind if you're going to modify this machine. But let's go ahead and put this pressurized basket in. There we go. All right, what we're going to do then is uh, another 16 gram dose. And I'm going to grind it much more coarse. Instead of a setting of four, I think I'll do a setting of eight. It's not quite as much that fits in the pressurized one. Okay. Let's see what a pressurized extraction looks like. Don't try this at home. If they aim down right, just like that. Okay, so that's what it's doing inside your porta filter. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Not great. All right. <laughs> so yeah, that's the, the pressurized extraction. And I think there is a pretty good demonstration uh, as to why you may want to depressurize your system. Use a normal IMS basket. Now what I have noticed is that in this machine, you can use the original porter filter. You don't have to cut the bottom off and you can use certain baskets. This is a cheaper basket here, uh, a Chinese one. And this is just slightly uh, smaller than the IMS basket. I have the H26 IMS basket, which is 26 millimeters. This one right here is 24.4 millimeters and therefore this cheaper one or just any any that's like 24 millimeters or so is going to fit inside the porta filter without having to remove anything without having to cut the bottom off and that way you can get a non-pressurized extraction but i would definitely suggest using in addition the norm core puck screen so that you don't get cratered shots so that you get pretty decent shots but again i don't feel like the temperature is quite there but hey for 80 or 100 euros it's okay All right, so what we want to do now is check out the temperature profile of this silver crest and see how it looks. Let's dose out 16 grams. All right, I do have to also apologize for the audio bit. I've been having issues with audio lately. I had to have it AI corrected by Adobe for the main portion of the video. Hopefully this audio is better. Here we go. So I got a dose loaded up here. My thermometer says my thermal couples at 19. Here on this thermometer it says 22.6. So this does measure a good two or three degrees 
too low. Please keep that in mind. We just wanna see what the temperature curve looks like over time. All right, so we'll just put that in there like that. 16 grams in, we're gonna go for 32 out. Extraction looks pretty good at 88 degrees right there, 89. Oh, it's increasing over time. 95, 97. Okay, and we're at 27, 28, and 32 grams. So the extraction looks very good, but strangely, I've never seen that that kind of temperature curve before starts off a little low and goes up, 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 up over time. Maybe that's why it tastes a bit bitter and sour at the same time. All right, let's take a look at these two machines and compare them. Silvercrest on this side, DeLonghi on this side. Of course, the design is very similar, you'll see. But the first thing that I notice is that this top plate here on the DeLonghi is grounded. The top plate, however, on the Silvercrest is not grounded at all. Same thing here with the housing. The housing on the DeLonghi is grounded and I don't see any place where it's grounded here on the Silvercrest. I think that there are two spots where there would be spaces you could ground it, but it does not seem to be grounded. And so here I've got my multimeter and I got it set to continuity so that if there is a connection, it will beep. So if I take a look here and put one end on the ground of the DeLonghi and then I've, I just check around in here let's see what's all grounded. So the top plate is grounded, nice. The housing is grounded, you'll see that. And also the thermal block itself is grounded. So that is good news. Now if we check the Silvercrest machine on the other hand and if I check this top plate well Obviously, <laughs> the, the top plate is not connected, so it's not grounded. And I will show you something. It has some continuity, so therefore should be grounded. Now if I uh, take a look inside the machine, is the housing grounded? Let's just have a look. No, housing is not grounded anywhere. That is too bad. What about the thermal block? Yeah. Thermal block is grounded, but again, the housing is not grounded. All right, so with all that being said, the DeLonghi is the safer model. If there would be any voltage on the lid or on the housing, it would be put into ground. And here, it would not be. So that is a big thing. Now you're gonna see otherwise, the design is similar. You got the thermal blocks here on the right side. On the top, the hot water comes out and goes here to the brew group, which has got this Y connector. Some hot water relieves that brew group and comes up here into the steam valve. And the steam valve is queried. So here we've got a reed switch on the DeLonghi and we've got one on the bottom side here. I believe these wires are led back here. Here's where the query goes back to the controller for the DeLonghi. So all that's the same. The OPVs look different, so it's bigger and fatter here on the DeLonghi. I don't know if that really makes any difference. It's not adjustable. I'm guessing that this one is not adjustable either on the Silvercrest, but I'm not sure. One thing I do notice is that the connections here, um, you see on the Silvercrest, it's got this high pressure hose connected here with this brass fitting, which is kind of nice. DeLonghi uses the same thing, and on DeLonghi, you can just kind of pull these clips out and they've got some springiness to them. So you can just push them back in, no problem. They hold their place automatically. These ones here, unfortunately, they're like bent out of shape. So you put them through and then you bend them, which is gonna make them very difficult to replace. You have to bend them straight again first and then remove it, put it back in and rebend them. If you wanted to fix anything on this model, it's gonna be more difficult than on this one. So those are my observations thus far if you guys would like a full breakdown a full teardown of this model and if this video gets let's say 500 likes i will consider doing that now let's come to my final thoughts does it make any sense to buy this over the dedica no way jose the big problem is if you want to modify this machine and use any other parts 
there's there's just not much available. You can buy an aftermarket basket, that much is true. You can pull the Panarella off, and that way you can steam pretty nice. You can get an okay espresso, but I think you should just spend the extra 25 or 50 euros, get a DeLonghi Dedica, because there are forums dedicated to the Dedica on Facebook and so on. There are companies dedicated to making uh, aftermarket components for the DeLonghi Dedica. So you can just have more fun upgrading your machine and getting just the most out of it. With this one, you just have less capabilities. There's much less information online about it and probably no communities either. So I say just get the DeLonghi Dedica instead. I think also the quality is going to be better on the Dedica. And don't go for the Silvercrest, go for the Dedica. And one more thing I want to say right away, the Silvercrest is like really, really, really light. The Dedica is heavier. <clears throat> So to me, Dedica is the clear winner, especially considering that the price difference is really not much. I hope that you guys like this video, and if so, give it a like. Check out my other videos if you like what you see. Subscribe to the channel, it's totally free. Until next time, I say happy coffee drinking, and happy cappuccino drinking. Bye now.